Having one-line triggers that call class methods is definitely better than writing code directly in the triggers themselves. In the last section on bulk patterns, the goal tracker ap application had a trigger on contact with one line of code. Although this is better than coding your apex directly in the trigger, it still has other issues. Let's say we developed a few additional applications that each required a trigger on contact. A few things become clear. We can see boilerplate code that is being repeated unnecessarily and could become hard to manage. Just dealing with the unique parameters for each class method can become tedious. Additionally, this design doesn't address recursion issues. What happens if one trigger causes another one to fire, and vice versa? How would we know that we entered a trigger based on the actions of another trigger in the same thread? And again, since trigger execution order is unpredictable, we can't know if one trigger's logic will execute before or after any other trigger's logic. This precludes any notion of a final trigger, for example. The most common apex pattern for dealing with recursion is by leveraging a public static boolean somewhere in a class. Then, either in trigger code or in a class method called by the trigger, this static boolean is evaluated immediately when the trigger code first executes. If the value is false, then it is immediately set to true and processing continues. However, if this value is set to true when the trigger first checks it, that means that the trigger was fired as a result of DML that occurred within the same execution context. The trigger would then exit immediately to prevent recursion. This is actually a safe locking mechanism in Apex, since we would never have two separate threads in the same execution context attempting to execute the same code at the same time. But be, or keep in mind that unlike in Java, static variables in Apex are only global to the specific execution context that references them. So another trigger spawned by another thread, such as from another user, would get its own copy of the same static boolean, and therefore, it would be set to false initially, even if ours was already set to true. But although this does provide an effective way to prevent unwanted recursion, what about when you actually want to process something as a result of subsequent trigger activity in the same thread? And wouldn't it be nice if we could completely control the order of execution of all trigger logic while keeping everything nicely organized in discrete sections? Is that even possible? Yes, it's possible. And we'll be handling both a better approach to recursion and completely controlling the order of execution all in the same design. But first, we'll take a brief look at this simple is processing class in action. We'll use an inline Apex test method to quickly demonstrate its properties. Afterwards, we'll move on to, to the preferred design, an interface-based centralized trigger dispatching architecture. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that uh, class that we just created. It's actually, I've got it located in two places. I've got the class here and then a test class for is processing. So let's just go over this real quick. This, uh, get this a little bit larger so we can see. Um, so this would, you know, could have a lot more in it right now. It's just very straightforward. It's a class that's holding on to this um, static. And by including and referencing this class as, as a static, then we can, um, here we'll, we'll see that we can basically, uh, within this execution context, uh, we can be sure that uh, if it's set to true, that means that in this context, it's already been executed. Um, or it's already been called. So, uh, so we, we basically right here we have a test method that uh, we can do in line test methods. Typically, I like to do these in their own class because then it doesn't uh, take away your available um, space that you've got. Um, so, you know, it, it sort of counts against the available space. Um, for this short example, it's no big deal. Uh, you know, so we can just put this in here in line. But again, I always do test methods in their own classes. So when you have the, the is test on top of the class, uh, that doesn't count against your total Apex code storage requirements. I think it's maybe two megabytes. I'm not sure uh, what it currently is, but um, in any case, so this is just going to verify this. Um, so walk through. It's very simple. We just say, uh, you know, this right here was called perhaps from a trigger. So process logic comes in and it says, all right, if we're not already processing, in other words, if this is false, then go ahead and jump in here. As soon as I jump in here, make this equal to true. Do the processing. 
Uh, if this processing happened to have DML that caused another trigger firing when it came in here, it would say, nope, sorry, this is true. We can't come in here and do anything, so it's going to block it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click here on this. Uh, uh, and when you right click, if you haven't done this before, it's really convenient. Just right click force.com, run tests, and it'll run whatever you're pointing to. In this case, this file. You could run all tests, but we're just going to run this one. So it goes, goes ahead and it uh, processes that test. Uh, we have warnings. It's just we don't have enough code coverage across uh, the rest of the code right now. That's fine. Um, but it, it passed the test. So basically what it says here is um, system assert that this is false when we start, meaning that it is not processing yet. And then I create a class. I execute process logic, which sets it to true. And then I system assert. And now it is definitely true. So, you know, if you do that and save and then go ahead and rerun the test as soon as it's done saving, then a good test should fail at this point. And it does, which is exactly what we want. So it failed the assertion right there. So, all right, that's short and sweet. We're going to get back into a few more slides and then we're going to look at our uh, new and improved trigger architecture.